Welcome to another edition of my Fireside Chat. We're here in Job Hall in, uh, on the campus of Delta State today where we're about to uh, take on one of our great programs of the year. It's the Distinguished Lecture Series program we call the Delta State University Colloquia. Our guest this time is U.S. Senator Roger Wicker, and we're happy to welcome you to campus, Senator Wicker. I know that our students and our faculty and staff will benefit from hearing your remarks this evening and the experiences that you have in, in government uh, in Washington and previously here in Mississippi. Senator Wicker is a prominent figure in Mississippi politics. He's enjoyed a long and distinguished career in state and federal government. He's represented Mississippi in the U.S. Senate since December of 2007, and during that time he has worked hard to help this country reduce its spending, limit federal overreach, and maintain a strong national defense. He's actively supported a number of programs of importance, like cancer survivorship programs and efforts to fight heart disease with the American Heart Association, as well as supporting research efforts related to diabetes, childhood obesity, and a number of other fields. In addition to that, he's been recognized as a champion of polio eradication, and he's the co-founder of the Senate Malaria Caucus. Senator Wicker is also a, a member of the U.S. Air Force Reserve, having retired in 2004 as a lieutenant colonel. And private, previous to his service in Washington, he was in the state Senate for many years and was a practicing attorney in Tupelo, Mississippi. Senator, thanks for joining us today. We're really happy to have you here. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, it, it's great to be back on campus with uh, old and dear friends like uh, President LaForge. And uh, I noticed in talking to some members of the audience who are already getting here that some of my former colleagues from the state legislature are here. So it's great to be back with friends. You're among friends. You absolutely are. Tell us a little bit about the uh, remarks you're going to share with us today on the notion of working together in a divided government. That's right. Well, you know, the, the voters in their wisdom often uh, elect a Democratic president and a Republican Congress, uh, uh, at times the other way around entirely. And so the question is, what message are they sending to us? Are, the, are they looking for uh, a check on the power of one branch against the other? Uh, or, or is it just a, a function of separate elections at the state level, at the district level, at the national level? Uh, so we, we might explore that a little bit today, but uh, basically I think the conclusion is they still want government to work and they want us to get results for the people. Right. Now, during your service in Washington, you spend most of the year in Washington uh, in the legislative arena doing what you're supposed to be doing, what you were elected to do. But you also are one of the best coming home and uh, visiting with constituents and being here during recesses and that sort of thing. How do you balance that? And also, what is the mood in Washington in this presidential election year? Well, the, the mood in Washington is uh, one of really watching a historic election unfold and uh, you know I, I have studiously refused to comment about who I might be for who might be voting for in the primaries but it, it's been certainly an interesting process the primaries are ongoing we've had ours in Mississippi and now they're sort of moving out west so we're watching that with interest and of course that will culminate in the July conventions and in the general election uh, my goal and my political uh, part of the equation this year is to be chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. So I'm emphasizing uh, my role in helping my Republican colleagues be reelected this year. Very good. Tell us uh, your prediction, prognostication on the nomination uh, by President Obama of uh, Judge uh, Merrick Garland for the Supreme Court of the United States. Well, you know, I do expect that to be a campaign issue. Uh, and and I think probably it it will uh, it will cut both ways, but it, it, it is a fact that we have not had a uh, a Supreme Court nominee confirmed uh, when that vacancy occurred during a presidential election year, uh, and and that the nomination was put forward for that replacement in an election year since 1888. So uh, I think there's precedent, and also there there is what we now call the Biden rule. When he got, when 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 he was 
a member of the Democratic majority in the Senate when President, uh, Vice President Biden was a member of the majority in the Senate and a Republican president was thinking about appointing someone. He said that in an election year, we really ought to let the people speak to that. So we're going to uh, hold off on confirmation and, and the people of the United States in November will get a chance to really vote on what direction they want the Supreme Court to take. This is not just for four years. It's, 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 a, it's a generational thing. And there's been a five to four delicate balance there. Um, this nomination will, will change that, perhaps for a decade, perhaps for several decades. And so I think it's, um, I, I think in the end, the American people will have an opportunity and appreciate the opportunity to vote on the direction of the court. If the majority in the Senate uh, maintains that uh, stand and stands on that principle, is there a possibility during a lame duck session, uh, regardless of who is elected president in November, that there may be a confirmation? Because it doesn't seem that the credentials of this judge really are in much uh, debate. There are a lot of folks who think on both sides of the aisle that he's a very qualified judge. You're really not getting to the merits of that, but is that a possibility? Well, it, it, well you're right in that the principle is the voters should vote on this in, in a presidential election, regardless of who the nominee is specifically. And, and we took this position, I took this position before the, the name came forward. I'm going, if it's okay with you, President LaForge, I'm going to decline to speculate about what might happen in the November election and what might happen after that. But, but uh, I think our steadfast position in the Republican majority is going to be to let the American people speak to this in the election. After the election, then, we'll see what happens. But we don't know who the president's going to be or even which party is going to be selected. It's a fair response, and, and your consistency is admirable. You had the same <laughs> answer on CNN just the other night. <laughs> and you may have an opportunity in a few minutes to answer the same do question you think, from do you students think? on you that. Bet, yes. Now, everybody gets a softball question, and here's one for you. you you've served Mississippi with a long and distinguished period of time. Uh, seven terms in the House, I believe. Is that right? Yes, well. And now in the Senate, um, what's in it? in your heart and your mind? What Do you enjoy this? It has to be something in your persona that allows you to do this and, and brings you to public service. Uh, do you enjoy the service? Well, That's you know, a softball question. Uh, Bill, it, uh, you and I have known each other for 45 years or more. It could just easily have been you, but it, it, it couldn't have been me to be president of university. So I think we've, we've both gotten to do really, really interesting yeah. things. I'm glad in your introduction you mentioned what I've done on disease research. And, and there's one thing that I would add to that now, but, but you, you mentioned polio and, uh, and uh, being chairman of the Malaria Caucus and things like that, the things we've done on cancer. Uh, but also, I have a bill now that, that I think could move us um, quite far in conquering Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm which not only takes such a devastating toll, but, but it, it takes a toll on the federal deficit. So to be able to represent the people of Mississippi, to travel around and hear their concerns, but also to tackle things that can help people in their everyday lives, like curing a disease or lessening the impact of a disease. Uh, I was the author of a muscular dystrophy bill. Hmm. And, uh, and honestly, I took it around the first day I introduced it on both sides of the aisle. Uh, had uh, well over 150 co-sponsors the first day. That's incredible. It, that was enacted by the House and Senate, and we have uh, lengthened the lives of these children who had Duchenne muscular dystrophy on the average of 10 years since that bill was passed. And so the opportunity to do that sort of thing and actually help people have a better and longer and more fulfilling life in addition to moving around the state and seeing interesting things like the Grammy Museum and there Delta State University. It's, well, a, it's a great challenge and a, and your, a wonderful opportunity. Your response on the substance of the type of bills you're working on is probably the most uh, heart uh, uh, pulling issue that we could possibly do. Those are the best substantive answers for the people, and we appreciate what you do. And thanks for being with us at Delta State. Well, it's great to be back. I always appreciate you, you being here. Yeah. Thanks very much. In other news on campus, this week the 11th annual International Business Symposium will kick off March 30th and will feature a number of top business professionals, including David Abney, Delta State's alumnus, who is CEO and chairman of the board at UPS. And he and his wife, Sherry, are the sponsors of our symposium. 
The Winning the Race Conference kicks off today on campus, and a symposium on the Beatles, co-sponsored with the Grammy Museum Mississippi, will kick off this Friday. Also Friday uh, begins our third annual Go Green Weekend. Information on all of these events and many others can be found on our university website at deltastate.edu. Thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you the next time.